Welcome to episode six of the Sporty's Advanced Pilot Skill Series. I'm Spencer Suderman, airshow pilot, flight instructor, and Guinness World Record holder for most inverted flat spins. In this episode, we're gonna find out if the nine to one glide ratio of the Cessna 172 is realistic, and what happens when we try to estimate how much distance we can cover in an engine out emergency. Let's start at 6,000 feet over the beach in St. Augustine, Florida. An important thing to understand in managing an emergency, and specifically an engine out emergency while in cruising flight, is how far can you glide the airplane if you completely lose power. Now, published glide for most Cessnas, like the 172 I'm in now, is 9 to 1. That means for every one foot of altitude you lose, you move forward 9 feet. So if I lose 1,000 feet of altitude, I move forward 9,000 feet. Well, that's pretty handy because a nautical mile is 6,076 feet. Let's round that down to 6,000 feet. So that means for every 1,000 feet of altitude, if I've established best glide, according to the book, I should be able to travel 1.5 nautical miles. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into whether that will actually work or not. How heavy is the airplane? What's its loading? What are the winds like? How well is the airplane trimmed? So let's do an exercise now where I've set up some markers on my GPS app on my phone, and I'll take some screenshots and share them up here on the screen. Those markers are six nautical miles apart. I'm going to start at 6,000 feet. I'm going to pull the power. And in theory, if I've got two markers on my GPS that are six nautical miles apart, and I start at 6,000 feet, if all works out well according to the 9 to 1 glide ratio formula, I should be just at 2,000 feet by the time I reach the second marker on my GPS. Will we make it? I don't honestly know. But let's evaluate the uh, 9 to 1 glide ratio and understand how to use it in the calculation of what to do in a real engine out emergency. I've set up the scenario. I'm at 6,000 feet. I'm about to fly over marker 2. I'm going to slow the airplane down, so I'm just about at best glide over marker 2. And I'm going to let the uh, airplane just glide itself down to marker 1, 6 nautical miles away, 4,000 feet of altitude loss. If the math works out, if the 9 to 1 glide ratio holds true, and not considering other factors, I should be at 2,000 feet by the time I reach marker 1, 6 miles. Now, let's go to pull the engine power and establish best glide. And we're going to see if we descend 4,000 feet in six nautical miles and reach marker one at about 2,000 feet of altitude. I've established best glide, 65 knots. We are descending at 500 feet a minute. It's a good thing it's a nice calm wind day, so wind shouldn't be a factor. I don't appear to be getting drifted off the beach in either direction. Keep in mind, the airplane's very light right now. I'm alone in the airplane. I would expect to actually have a better than 9 to 1 glide and be able to go further. Not quite at 5,000 feet yet, and I've already traveled a little over 2 miles. The plane is well trimmed at 65 knots, about a 500 foot per minute descent. I've now descended 1,000 feet. Looks like I've got 3.2 miles left. I've traveled almost half the distance between the two marks and only lost 1,000 feet. Right now, my glide ratio is clearly better. 9 to 1. We're going to keep going until we either reach marker 1 or reach 2,000 feet. But right now we're only 2.7 miles from marker 1. We've traveled over half the distance and according to the altimeter we've only lost about 1,250 feet. This is actually very impressive. This is part of how you get to know the airplane, how you learn the machine and you learn about yourself as a pilot. By going out and doing these kind of exercises and understanding the environment in which you operate in and how to communicate and connect with the machine. So now I've lost 1,500 feet of altitude and I've traveled about four nautical miles. Super impressive. There's 4,000 feet. Let me take a screenshot. We've actually got 1.1 miles to go until we reach marker one. We're going to calculate all this. Not in my head, though. Very bad at doing math in real time in front of people or cameras. So we're either going to terminate this exercise at 2,000 feet or reaching marker one. I think we're going to reach marker one first because it's only about three quarters of a nautical mile away at this point. And I'm just descending through 3,700 feet. So we're now descending through 3,500 feet. 
And according to the GPS, there's just a little over a half a nautical mile to go to marker one. I think we're going to reach marker one well before we reach 2,000 feet of altitude. I think we passed marker one. We're actually getting further away. But let's continue down to 3,000 feet and we'll see how far we went. 3,000 feet, let's take a screenshot. We're 1.2 miles beyond marker one. That was an interesting learning experience. I actually traveled 7.2 miles while descending 3,000 feet, which works out to about a 14 to one glide ratio. Keep in mind that best glide is calculated at maximum gross weight, and for this flight, the plane was 421 pounds below that. The engine was at idle, so there could still be a small amount of thrust from the propeller, and even a slight tailwind would push the plane farther. This is a great exercise to try on your own or with an instructor if you're more comfortable. Set your favorite airport as the destination, then see if you can glide to a landing from a distance. Traffic conditions permitting, of course. Are you ready to continue your aviation journey and further expand your flight skills? Check out one of Sporty's exciting aviation courses, which include everything from private pilot training, how to fly tailwheel airplanes, and aerobatic training with Patty Wagstaff. Visit sporties.com forward slash discover for more information.